This is it. This is the lax stack. I really enjoyed this build. It was really fun. It's the first one I've ever done of these, and it was interesting. I learned a lot. Mistakes were made, and as you'll see in the video, um, things I didn't put in the video um, are these little stops right here, and I, I put one on top, and then there's one on the bottom, and... I know the original design just called for one on the bottom, but I just used uh, one on top and uh, as well. And I felt that that made it uh, a little better fit when I was closing it. Uh, also, like I said, I added these front supports right here. Um, I felt they were needed. I'm gonna have a link to uh, my parts in the description. That's pretty much it. And then this right here is something I also added onto it. It wasn't part of the design, um, which is my um, clipper setup with the touch screen. It's just something I thought it, it looked really good right there, so I put it right there. I still have storage down here I can use for my filament dryers or whatever I want to do. And so far, this is a great um, setup. It's very convenient. I also, up on top of here, as you can see, I have um, a couple different size filament rollers, one for larger filaments, obviously, and then we got this one for smaller filaments. I also put a link to those. I also have a video um, that I'll be putting together on how I actually did those. And so let's just get started on how I built it. Okay, so the design that I, I grabbed off of, uh, I think it was Thingiverse, it had some structural issues that I didn't like. Um, one of the main things being is that it only had two points of contact uh, and that was here and here. I ended up adding a, a third point of contact on there so that way the it wouldn't flex when um, the leg was in there because what I was having a real bad issue was when it stood up, it would basically bow and it would flex like out in this direction or out in that direction. It just wasn't good. I didn't like it. I felt it needed another point of contact. So I went ahead and I added that in there and it was a huge game changer. The second issue I had was on the lack table. It comes with these bolts right here. It's like a double sided uh, screw and it did seem to work on the rear. When we look back here, I basically would put one in like this, and then the other side I'd screw it in, and it timed just right. And that, and it's a nice tight fit, and it, and, it's, and it sits really well. However, when I was working on the front, it didn't really work all that well. And it would over time when it tightened down, or to get it where it was, you know, um, you know, parallel and perpendicular with you know the 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 top um it would be loose and i wanted a nice snug fit so that really wasn't going to work for me as you'll notice on the bottom of these it has th this little uh, conical shape right here there's actually a uh, part and that we'll talk about here in a minute that um when you stack it on top of a, a another uh, lac table, um, it's like a, it's a, it's a it's a conical shaped little um, like guide that sits in there, and that uh, basically allows it to you know get uh, hold in place and uh, fit securely and uh, on the on the top of the other table. And so what I did was I ended up um, taking this right there, taking one of those guides and opening up the di the inside diameter, the hole just slightly. And then I ended up using something like this to go in there. Now, obviously there's gonna be people from, you know, uh, Europe or, or even America that see this and, you know, one's uses Imperial, one uses metric. Uh, I know for the metric one, I used, uh, I think there's two and three quarter and a uh, quarter inch wide. Um, I, I don't know what the, the, uh, the metric version would be for this but that's what worked and i used a ratchet and i and i just ratcheted it down in there and i got it real nice tight and snug and that's what's holding this in place and i felt that that was the best way to do that um the second thing was these were originally designed for like three millimeter uh um 
I think acrylic. Yeah, like I think it was like three millimeter. And obviously I didn't have that. Um, what I ended up using was a 0.093 inch acrylic and that seemed to work just fine um the original designer um obviously was a, a european gentleman not and and when i when i put this in there i'm going to put the link to um his design i'm also going to link my modified parts to it which i needed and i felt made it a little bit better um the the two main differences on the parts uh, not only did i add this front here but i have a second version of this which has a more rounded side um other than that they're basically the same and that's pretty much for uh this part and then in a second i'm, I'm gonna assemble it up i'm gonna put the 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 acrylic sheets in and we'll talk about that and then i'm going to uh talk about how I did the top because originally this was designed for a Mark III Prusa and the sovel is just a little different, but not too much um, that it couldn't work. And so um, we'll, we'll get to the assembly process here and then um, we'll uh, get going on that. So it should be, should be fun. Now this is particle board too, or some kind of like glued together particle, whatever. So I do this with a nice low torque. Nothing too crazy, because I don't need it stripping out. It's cheap wood. Okay, so the next thing I did when I put on these tops, I, I used just a, basically a self-tapping wood screw I actually use uh, when I was doing some subfloor I these are the screws I use they work really well okay so ended up having to repair those holes because it was cheap so what I did was I just basically took a wood dowel took a Forstner bit which is one of these bits right here <coughs> basically drilled it down a little bit maybe about like that far and then um, Put uh, some wood glue and a dowel in there, and then took one of these little saws, cut it, and then that way we sealed it up. So basically, at that point, now that that's done, we should be able to get these screws down tight. And that's one of the big issues I've had with this design the whole time is just, you know, probably not the best quality wood. Now, what I did here is, because I haven't screwed everything in yet, you'll notice that I put, like, some tape on the side. Let me um, turn on this... Uh, light there yeah so I put some tape around here and also put some and just all the way around like that so we got it right where we want it and it kind of holds itself in place right there uh, when I originally did it I didn't have the plexiglass cut yet uh, this time I also have the plexiglass there as well to hold it in place um, and we're now going to use the self tapping one it'll just drill its way down in there Gotta make sure, try to keep it steady as I can. There we go. I only had my torque set at one, uh, so it took a little minute to get in there, but yeah, that's perfect. That's a super nice tight fit. Um, okay, great. Now, I'm gonna basically do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so this is one of the little tools that comes in the the design the guy has. And basically, it's like a center. Um, I don't know. You just put it on the edge of the table or wherever you're working on. And you basically, it puts a whole dead center. And usually, you use this on top of the table when you install the, the, the cone that, that's for each four corner. And... Um, but here, I'm just gonna try something because we just repaired it. I'm just curious. And so, we're gonna learn something together. See how centered. Okay. Doesn't feel like it's super in the center there, but we're just gonna have some fun and see how it, it works. Actually, surprisingly, that's exactly where I wanted it, where it's nice and flush with the edges on the outer edge. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, that's cool. We just learned something. 
So use that tool when drilling the holes for this part. Oh yeah, look at that. See the difference? Oh yeah. Probably could maybe run it in a little more. Hit it in five. Yep, okay, nice. Five. Torque, torque setting five is perfect. Perfect. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, I think this really concludes. Okay, this one can be a little tighter. Perfect, nice. Okay, so that means the outer edges are done and we're gonna start bringing out to the, the middle here. And I'll show you kind of what we got going on for the, the stand and setup that we're using. These are those little cone shaped guides that the, uh, the bottom or the, I guess these right here, slip onto. Okay. And that tool that I just used in that repair, this is what you use. You put it right on the corner, take the drill, and it puts it perfectly where these need to go. And it works great. So, um, I guess what we're going to do now, and you can see here on the back ones where the cable guides go through, um, this is, uh, this is what you'd run the cables through. You just put the cables right through here and there's the bottom of it. And then you got, it sits right down on top. So we're going to do that right now. And on this side, um, for the, the, the proofs of Mark III, I think they only did this side over here, but I added this side over here because uh, the way the, the cabling runs, um, this is where the power supply is gonna go and it's gonna sit under here somewhere. So you, it's gonna, should sit under here, but we're gonna get to that here in a minute. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, put the, the top of this on and um, start assembling the, the doors. So now what we're going to do, set it up, see how it fits. So I did mine a little different. We're doing a, we did it with a little lack stack here because my wife has her, her laser engraver there. And so I uh, kind of wanted to just put everything together. And so I used the lack stacks down here for this. And, and it really works well at stacking these tables. And I feel like it puts this up a little higher. It's a little more, instead of leaning down here, you know, I have to bend over. I'm not, not sure. Um, just stand right up here and do it. And it works just great. The original design of the handles basically used a friction fit in order to fit over the plexiglass. Unfortunately, I did not have metric plexiglass available to me. All I had was the Imperial SAE type, uh, stock down at the local hardware store so this actually ended up being a lot more complicated and uh, more difficult than I believe it would have been if I had metric parts available to me um, here it required a lot of sanding and I also had to use uh, masking tape over the plexiglass in order to build up layers so I could get that friction fit from the uh, the handles and um, there was probably also about maybe three hours of sanding off camera that I had to do in order to get the door to open and close smoothly without binding up on the uh, frame of the lac table. So it, it was a pretty uh, complicated uh, process, or I should say time consuming instead of complicated. 
another little issue that I had was because this was really uh, designed for the Prusa instead of the Silvo SV06. Um, th these doors were designed to basically open and then uh, telescope inwards, but because of the width of the Silvo SV06, uh, that was just not going to be possible. So at this point, I decided to use some super glue and just fix uh, the doors in place so they couldn't slide in out of the way. It would have been a great feature. I would have loved to have it, but um, just due to the solval width, that wasn't going to happen. Overall, even though I lost that feature, I was still very happy with the way the doors turned out in the end. They opened and closed smoothly, and I just like the feel of the design, um, even with its little drawbacks. Okay, so right now we just got our Sobel set up. We've repaired the uh, gantry um, alignment issue with the square by printing out these parts. We also replaced all the bearings in there. And, and now that we've done that, we can move on to spool installation. And as you can see right here, the stock spool won't fit once we put it in the enclosure. So what we need to do is set up a way for it to be able to feed. And we're gonna go with this and it's gonna be somewhere right out in here. It's gonna sit in there and our spool is gonna feed to it from right about here. And that's how we're gonna set it up. This is our new, new spool roller and feed tube. Okay. So what I did was I wanted it to be aesthetically pleasing. So we put in the middle. I, I set the center off of the door right there. And we used the little square Got it set up. And then we also set it up over here as well. So we're going to set up where I want it. So we're about nine and a half inches down. I want it to sit a little bit in front of the, um, a little bit in front of the extruder for uh, feed issues. Um, so it doesn't have any feed issues, I should say. Okay, now that we have that, those are just little marks. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set that up here. And we, we're just going to intersect these. Probably it's going to look right about here, but I'm going to I'm going to grab a ruler because I'm a perfectionist, and that's what I do. So, so this is absolutely probably overkill on rulers, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this right there, and then we have this line right here. And I'm just going to intersect it. Right there, it should be, oh, it was pretty close, wasn't it? Boom, there we go. That's that's my sweet spot. That's where I'm gonna drill. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drill a little pilot hole. So, I'll get the drill set up and I'll be back for that in a second. So, I'm just gonna drill a little pilot hole right there. Nothing too crazy, just to get it started. I'm gonna move to a bigger bit. We're gonna go right through the table. And then we're gonna see how it fits. So I used the drill bit as a guide and that helped me get it through that hole. So that works out great. Now that that's done under here, we're gonna, this screw is right on. This is all 3D printed. I'm gonna leave links to everything I'm using. So not any. There we go. And that's it. That part is done. So the final step to get this set up, now that we've done the uh, spool feeder, um, we're gonna have to remove this power supply and put it outside of the um, 
enclosure. Too much heat can reduce the life span of these. Eventually, I would like to move the computer out there too and rewire that. That's a future project down the road. So we're gonna remove this, then we're gonna we're gonna fit it. Okay, so now that we have that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I've got to be able to run the power and do this very gently because we do not want to clip any of these wires. What we want is this wire right here. Okay, the rest We'll, we'll route besides we want to we want to route this cable here in a little bit anyway but we want this cable so what I'm going to do now is that we did this I'm going to go ahead I have some other zip ties okay. so now that we've done that we'll just cut that okay now that we have this done This is going to go right through here, just like that. I'm going to have this feed the power down there. So now that we have this set up, um, what we want to do, and this is not the final spot for the printer. We're just doing all the fitting right now. What I decided to do was instead of pre-drill it, just I'm just going to, because this is such cheap wood, I can easily screw into it without an issue. So that's what we're gonna do. Do not over tighten these because it will, you'll just round it out easily and quickly. first way of doing it was not a good way to do it like holding this up with my hand and then I'm trying to just you know keep this weight up and then hit it with a screwdriver very awkward very cumbersome not not good and it caused me when I was doing it I didn't realize that I slipped a little low and then um, I actually when I drilled those holes and set it up it just uh, well you can see it was wrong so live and learn I guess now what we'll do is we'll just put the enclosure top back on. We'll just do a, a test fit real fast and we'll see how it works. As you can see, the guide hole that we did before we used works really good with this. And we can just take it down here and we can just put it in. That's it, and it's done. We need to power it on. And just hit up here and that's it we're good um, we also I have another hole on this side when we get clipper installed on this one primarily because it's gonna be kind of awkward to reach in there and change out SD cards but we can, we can run a USB cable right through here connect it up and this is gonna allow for a lot we can use these um, excess holes too to run um, you know lighting in here whatever we want to do i am going to be setting up a smoke detector and an internal chamber thermometer with humidity um, just for fun and we will be doing a final insulation here um, with a reflective material uh, we could use a styrofoam house insulation or we might use something that looks similar to like a, a radiant barrier i haven't really decided what i want to use yet um, either way, it's going to be good. And 
I don't know. And we might set up a camera in here too, because if I insulate the front doors, we won't be able to see through them. But either way, this will be good for doing um, your ASA, your ABS, your carbon fiber nylons and all that kind of stuff. Why don't we, just for fun, put on a roller, see how it does on its final fit here. And let's see, I got some, uh, some of the inland stuff, same as uh, Nissan, and it should just go right down in there. And as we see right through here, it feeds, and look at that, it rolls so good. And that's it, we just feed it right down in here. Should be fine. I'm feeding it a little through the front, a little forward of the, um, of the extruder. So, that way it doesn't get hung up on anything, but I think this is good. And obviously, um, we wanna make sure too that when we do this, when this extends all the way forward, that this is not hitting, um, the Y-axis isn't hitting that, and we'll push it all the way back, make sure it doesn't, we don't care if the, we don't care if the, uh, we might have to, we might actually rethink this right here because that's bunching a little more than I would like right there. So when we get it in there like that, I don't like that. Okay, so due to the weak point on this uh, connector here, a lot of people are having them break off. And so that was one of the things I really wanted to, to focus on. Um, you know, once I got this in the um, enclosure, um, was to get this set up. Um, so the, the first one that I used for a um, cable management type setup here for this heater bed um, was this one right here. And it works great. This works really good if you aren't running it in an enclosure or at least the enclosure that's my size. Because what happens is this causes some really bad binding and causes this point here to, to flex out at almost like 90 degrees and stuff like that. And since most of these, a lot of people are complaining about these breaking off and it causing a short, which is frying this main board, that this was no longer an option right here. So I took this off. So that meant, okay, what am I gonna do? Where am I gonna go with it? So, what I did was I found these and they were like multiple solutions and they're like five different versions and uh, version one was the shortest, two, three, this one's five. I'm using number four on there right now, version four. And these seem to work really well. Um, just make sure that when you do it, this the little uh, tensioner class part that you use is up top, otherwise it won't fit over this right here. But that was my solution to this. So now the cable setup's pretty good to go. And um, now I'm just gonna put it back together. Also on this setup as well, I also did a, a uh, camera mount here that we're gonna do. I also have another one where we can do a camera mount up front because I'm gonna be running two uh, cameras with this clipper setup that we have going on right now. But now I'm just doing one. So that's where we're at. I had these leftover screws that um, basically held the power supply into the uh, aluminum extrusions for the, but since we basically, you know, uh, remounted the power supply underneath, um, I'm going to use these to uh, swap out these screws right here because they're a little longer and that will allow me to put a, a camera mount right here on the front. Okay, so I have it set up. Now the screws that I'm using are just... Uh, They're just about three quarter inch long and quarter inch thread. And 
I'll also leave the links to the setup that I'm using for the camera mounts in here as well. They work really good. So here's some time-lapse photography that I use with my webcam that I set up with Clipper. Uh, one of the things I would like to do later on is maybe find a camera that works a little better uh, sitting so close to the bed. So that's one of my future projects I'm going to work on. Hopefully this uh, helps somebody out and gives you some ideas and possibly maybe you can improve upon it later. Happy printing.